Yeah. Yeah. All right. <coughs> Call the meeting to order. This is the purchasing in 2002 financial management uh, meeting committee. We're in conference room 112. It's March 11th, 2024, 4 p.m. Call the meeting to order. Commissioner Brown, would you mind leading us in an invocation? Sure. Thanks. Lord, we come before you at this time, and we're always mindful of the fact that we are your children, and, and we seek your guidance. Wisdom is something that we always crave, and we, we covet your wisdom. Please uh, give us all that is necessary in order to consider the general welfare of this county, to help us to make those decisions without bias, without personal ambition. Lord, we are also mindful of the sacrifice that your son gave us upon the cross, the fact that he washed away all of our sins in that life-giving flow. Be with us as we go forward the rest of this evening. Keep us safe. We ask this in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We're going to take a minute to review the agenda. to approve the agenda. Yeah. Okay. Second. There's a motion on the floor to approve the agenda. All in favor? No. Aye. No, oh, wait, no, oh. that, that was what I was talking oh, sorry. about. Uh, we'd like to add this Just resolution guess. here to the agenda. Uh, Do you have a the agenda? Section 8F to look over this agenda here. Uh, this is a resolution. 8F. 8F. Sorry, new business F. Yes, um, new business 8F. So, I want to yeah. make a motion to right. add this to the agenda, please. Do we have a second for? I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And have uh, under yeah. business item F, the resolution that was passed out by the county attorney. Set. 
sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Do you want me to make that motion again? Now? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, motion to approve. We did that before you got here. Okay. Motion to approve the agenda. Second. Second. Sure. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Aye. Uh, minutes. <clears throat> Oh, so sorry, 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 yeah. sorry. We skipped recognition from the public. I'm going to back that up. Would anybody like to speak to the uh, committee? All ears. All right. Now approval of minutes. Please take a look at them. Good. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? <clears throat> so I'll start with a quick report. Uh, we're going to look at quite a few topics from the subcommittee discussions that we've had over the past couple of months uh, and one of the one of the key pieces here is the uh, the purchasing and accounts payable policies and procedures which we reviewed December 11th there were several items that needed further review I think at this point we've reviewed or discussed most of them but a couple of the outstanding ones still included um, getting some wording or reviewing the is the engineering portion. I believe the mayor's going to reach out to the county engineer for that. So we'll be looking at the engineers okay with language. Okay, perfect. And then we had a few other things that were already passed by the uh, the commission, including increasing approval of. Um, Contract review and uh, I believe it was some some other minimums. Um, one of the other topics on there was also reviewing the uh, pay period issue, which was reviewed on February first at our last subcommittee meeting. Everyone in attendance voted unanimously for possible option two, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, that's the motion that carried. And I'll just read this into the, into the notes here. So in order to correct this timekeeping issue where we've got some employees that are paid from the day they start without a holdback period, so they're paid in advance basically rather than in arrears, it's causing some issues with, with the timekeeping software. So the option to fix that would be this option two that we voted on, which is set a specific time that all employees will have at least a five-day holdback period, give all employees in the affected departments the second week, obtain the budget committee's tentative commitment for the funds needed, and notify the affected departments and employees in advance. The one-time budget effect would be approximately $270,000. So basically what this would do is move, move people's start dates back a week with no out-of-pocket issues and the county would be basically paying that extra week out as they retired or as they left so the 270,000 I understand it would not be a one-time cash reduction for 2025 but would be more of an accounts payable accrual that would draw from as people left mm -hmm. uh, I'm assuming average 10 years 10 to 20 years so do the math whatever 270 divided by 10 to 20 years would be approximately the cash spent per year on this which seems fairly reasonable to me at least to, to get this cleaned up so we can move forward with some of our other stuff that we're trying to accomplish here so okay that's an opinion not a fact but <laughs> did i miss anything so, chairman is there um so this doesn't affect the employee right the county is offsetting them yeah. correct it would be 100 percent covered it'd be basically like they got a as far as i understand it a three weeks paid vacation yeah that they just get yeah. whenever they retire. I know that sticks in, you know, but if you, we would be so open to a wage and hour lawsuit because you'd have to go back and try to calculate when they earn that week. So I, mean, I know we talked about that before. I think it's the best part. I think that's a great word. That's really positive and, you know, way to solve the problem moving forward. I believe that's the same way Murfreesboro did it when they reached out. That's what I've heard here say, but. They had the same issue and they just ordered the week. I spoke to CTAS. They didn't mention names, but they said other places had done that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some more type of yes. My understanding is Murphy's Borough. I can't guarantee it. Um, and as far as other open issues that we had from purchasing, I don't 
I don't know if you had any other ones, but does anybody have? I know I had some stuff in here around uh, some things for boots that I think we got worked out, but other than that, I think we've at least got enough feedback to, to take another look at this at our next subcommittee meeting. Me and Toby's talked about it and got it dealt with. Okay. It was a working, based on what we're doing, it's going to be a working condition benefit based on safety boots. Perfect. Because they're all safety boots is what they ended up being, not just boots. So that, that goes to the full commission for approval. Um, so this, we'll, we'll vote on it later, but the option to, we'll vote on it collectively and then that'll go, I believe, yeah. as a resolution of the committee, uh, either this month or next month. I, don't know. I think one thing we have to decide is that um, the language around, you know, to qualify for it, you have to be on the new system, I think was something that was gonna be discussed or something that we've been discussing to make sure that we don't have this problem again, basically. That's all I have. Mr. Mayor? No report. Mr. Sitt? Uh, I do not have a report other than what may come up out of the uh, added item to the agenda, so I'll just reserve anything for that, Okay. if that's okay. Looks like we do have some updated numbers from the trustee if anybody wants to review those. I know several folks on here like to keep keep an eye on those. They do have a representative here. You got any questions? Oh. No questions for me, but anybody else on the committee? Numbers keep getting bigger. That's good. <laughs> right. Mr. Long? No, no report. Uh, only old business topic we have, uh, just a request from the Elected Officials Association, if we can get a copy of last meeting's minutes. I don't know if you've got those. Yeah, as soon as we meet to approve them. Okay. Yeah, sure. All right. We haven't met yet. We'll push that to old business again for next month. So we're now on uh, the subcommittee return of items, pages 5 through 15. I already read off uh, a recap from what we discussed. It was a very short meeting, but again, voted unanimous, unanimously if you need to page 7 for option 2. Other options were discussed, but um, to the superintendent's point, we wanted to figure out a way least impactful to the employees that would also mitigate risk on our end as well. So it seemed like the the best balanced approach to, to accomplish what we need to. How many employees does this affect? 200 and 228. 228, is that number? I think it's the one I last time. I had it down somewhere. Yeah, 228 when I picked up the number. And that may be based on vacancies. It's, 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 it's just seamless to them. They, won't, they really won't know anything. Right? So kind of, kind of, just, their, employee. just their lead balances at the end of the year will be higher. By five days. I got you. Okay. And if you want to see the breakout, David's got every, every line item in here. Red was one that could potentially be exempt from the Is that the blue still? Uh, blue or department heads. Yeah, I don't know what you mean. Yes, I'm sorry. Didn't know about Library director. The other the, um, copy machine didn't do any papers. <laughs> Turn blue, purple, pink. 
that was the um, the actual director for the uh, archives because she only manages one employee. She's a working manager, so it's kind of questionable whether wage and hour how well she does qualify for any exemption. <coughs> kind of denoted that. Can you explain why you recommended option five? Which one was option? Um, option five is the cheaper option, and it could achieve the same thing by treating the department heads just a little bit different because they're exempt. Basically, you treat treat all the hourly and other employees the same, but the department heads, you would just pay them out for their um, extra days at the last payroll in June and then divide their payroll by 26 because they just do payroll by exception anyway. They don't, they don't track hours. But it is cheaper doing it that way. 30000 that would take out the uh, all the directors, like the uh, library directors, the construction and development, planning, uh, finance, uh, legal, uh, any of the directors are in there. Archives, I have in the list, but I would question that, and you probably would want to treat it that way. And then I think VA's in that group too. Is there? Uh a reason not to go with Mr. Long's recommendation? Uh, I know John got feedback from a lot of the folks about implementing, and his belief was that it would be easier to implement two, and there'd be less uh, less pushback to to two, just to getting it implemented. So more of an keeping this thing moving. We kind of lean towards two rather than creating more complexity with five. But Correct me if I'm wrong. For discussion, I'll make an option. I'll make a motion to approve option two. I'll second that. Any further discussion? I've spent a lot of time thinking about it, and I went back and forth on the whole paying off of the employees to the point I called C task and even asked. Um, it's got to go through commission. There's some people on there that aren't going to like the idea to start with. There's taxpayers that already don't like the idea. Mm -hmm. um, I would more lean towards Mr. Long's recommendation of the cheaper option. That's, that's just where I'm at. Okay. We've got a motion a second. We'll put this to a vote. If it goes down, we'll vote on five. Is that how it would work? <coughs> yes. Okay. So, all in favor of option two, say aye. 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 All opposed? No. No. Is that five to two? Motion carries. Uh, we do still need to discuss, I believe, the, the timing of this. So what would, I believe, option five had uh, effective date of June 1st. I'd like to see if anybody would call motion to have June 1st be the effective date on this as well. Why June 1st? What's that? Why June 1st? Just out of curiosity. It aligns with the budget, right? July 1st. Oh, okay. July 1st then. You could always do it on the last uh, payroll in June either one. You must just do it on the last payroll in June, maybe the easiest. Yeah. Since you're going to do all of them. The June 1st was if you were going to do the option 5, so the last, the last <coughs> payroll in June would probably be the easiest to do it on. So July 1st would be a well, It'd be the last payroll where you pay out the payroll in June, which would be to see what happens. So we do it based on, instead of setting a day, we'll just say the based last, on the last payroll in June. Which will be that Thursday, yeah. the last. Yeah. So that'll, that'll reside in this year's budget. Yes. This means it we'll probably need to go on to budget next month. So would that be, I, I'm just thinking through here, because we have to get budget approval for an unallocated expense of 200, I mean, I know it's not $270,000 all at once, but. I guess my question would be, is this be something better to put in? I understand what you're saying, David, but I'm wondering if there's new, if there's money, I guess my question if I'm on budget would be, have it prepared for this. Is it better to 
to budget it in next year's budget. I mean, you know that better than me. I don't. It would probably be easier to swallow an extra year's budget, but it'd be a cleaner break if you did it. If you do, okay. if you don't, then some of those hourly employees are going to mix their cost of living and this all together, and it's going to get really. Okay. I'm afraid it's going to get confusing, Billy. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. June 20. Which I one? know it's June like 20. a reclass. June 20. Yeah, it's not going to be a substantial. Amount. It's, it's a re basically a reclass, right? Basically, you would take if they if their payroll ended on. That Friday, you're going to move the payroll in the Friday before and give them, you know, five day work week in there. I'm not really talking about the employee. I'm talking about the accounting component of that. It's it's mainly a reclass. It's it's a budgetary expense. So right. so we would just at the end of the year instead of say if you had eight days of vacation, you're going to end up with thirteen. Right. Because we put five more in. And if that employee left when they leave the organization when they retire right. or early, you would just catch that five days. You would catch that five days at the end. And it wouldn't actually make the vacation board just move it back. You're going to have, in other words, if you're going to have two unpaid payroll, say on that last payroll, if you're going to have two unpaid payroll days, you're going to have seven instead. That's so in cool. effect, if they leave, they'll get paid out. Yes, or yeah. unless they use it. Right. Okay. It's just when they leave. When so the only, after, the only new money would be is if someone happened to coincide with leaving right at the last time frame. Right. right. So that's not going to be. It's going to be a budgetary expense. That's not going to be a substantial amount. Cash is going to be going out very slowly over several, right. several years on this. So just from a, a timing perspective, if you roll it into this year's budget versus next year's budget, do we have, just from a, a, a balance sheet perspective, do we have the, the, the room to do it this year? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any of the funds, the general fund could absorb that. It's pretty healthy. So I guess, Dr. Mike, we're going back to your thought of moving into next year. So I mean, if you make a clean break this year, I, I think you just probably did. I think the clean break makes more sense. Yeah. Just I'm afraid some of your hourly employees will get mixed up about it. They'll show that line. Say if there's one employee on there, they'll show the line increasing by more because that accrued for next year. And then they'll say, I got it. Well, I mean, it would be such a small, I mean, you wouldn't catch over a handful of bit, but you'd have to time it out perfectly. Yeah, yeah. yeah let somebody see it yeah. And you honestly give everybody incentive to stay through June. Stay through June. Right. So I'll make the motion to have it effective the last pay period of June. Yeah. Yes, second. Second for that? We have a second, yeah. Okay. Could we I don't know if it's in here, but amend that to make sure they're on the new Kronos payroll system before they they qualify for it. Was that something that was in here originally? That was never discussed. Um, I thought that we discussed that. Do we not? Uh, uh, the subcommittee didn't discuss it. You guys may have discussed it. I'm sorry, <coughs> I missed it. It wasn't discussed at the subcommittee. Okay. That Kronos is a separate issue. Yeah. Okay. That's why. So move forward with the motion. Implement the last sorry. pay period in June and the second. Take it so to the vote. we're doing it without Kronos? Yeah, Kronos is separate from this. This recommendation at this point, yes. So the whole reason was to get, okay. So, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Issue uh, new business topic C purchasing issues. Uh, we've got the county clerk here. Sorry, circuit court clerk. My apologies. Dave, would you mind giving us a quick summary? Of, uh, um, I'm just bringing it to your attention. I just received a request to transfer funds for a timekeeping system. My understanding is. All departments are, uh, when implementation is complete, required to be on chrono, so I'm bringing it for information. Um, that's kind of where I'm at on it. Make a motion for discussion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Chairman, was this an illegal purchase? I mean, not that I'm aware of. No. Why are we addressing it? 
Um, I believe there was just concerns over uh, the fact that we have a countywide system. And there was not requested. a legal purpose. It shouldn't be on the agenda. Okay. Well, the thing, thing is, it's not, Kronos is what we're going to be doing it by, so. Still not a legal purchase. I understand. I make a motion that we disregard this or whatever we need to do, not to take any action on it. Second. I don't think we were taking action. I was, I was just looking at it as a du duplicate system. Yeah. Still was not an illegal purchase. So we also address duplicate systems. But I, I don't think and there's any fine. action. I, I, fine, I, I don't think that's a topic item for this committee. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think so either. And I think that hearing Ms. Strong's explanation, you know, it's not just a Kronos type system. She's using it for a lot of different functions. And then with the mayor, it's, you know, it's, it, she's constitutionally elected to run her office. And I think that's, if we're going to start micromanaging every purchase in every department, that's a problem. Yeah, I understand the concerns here. I think um, what I'd like to just remind everybody is that the whole purpose of the financial co committee here is to implement the Financial Management Act. And we're working in good faith trying to get new systems implemented and want to make sure that we are providing the right services and the right products so that maybe we don't need to buy duplicate systems. And if there's a, if there's a roadblock that we're causing, not allowing people to get on the new system, what can we what can we do to help that along? So this this to me is not a it's not a legal purchase. It's more of a why do other departments feel they, they can't use the system we bought and how do we fix it? So if we could get maybe that yeah. feedback, that would be fantastic. Well, and I think it, uh, I'm, sorry. Sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I would love to speak to that if y'all would let me speak yes, to that. Yes, please. That's I mean the Financial Management Act was implemented in two thousand twelve. In two thousand twenty four it still is not implemented through no fault of the department heads or uh, elected officials or anything. I'm not in charge of Kronos or the implementation thereof. I've never expressed that I wouldn't go on Kronos, but it's unfair to expect department heads to wait on a timeline for which the finance office, even in the document they provided to you today, cannot give you a timeline for implementation of Kronos in these offices. There are eight offices in the county on Kronos, out of all of them, eight. Until that, well, that's what's on the timeline that you submitted to us. I counted eight that are already on. Every, a lot of other ones say analyzing. To date, we have received no communication from the finance office with regards to a timeline for implementation when we are ready to go on it. The only communication I've received from the finance office has been in response to me asking about a timeline for implementation. The last email that I received that the finance director likes to tell people that I failed to respond to. The last line says, we're not far off from testing if you are still interested. It is certainly not a, hey, this is what we need to do in furtherance of the Financial Management Act, and this is what we're putting out, and this is what we all need to do. That has never been communicated to any of the department heads. We're hearing about this from meetings like this where I'm being called on the carpet for trying to do what's absolutely best for my office. So, I mean, I, I, I don't know what else to do other than the time that it costs the taxpayers for us to manually keep up with all the wage and hour stuff. But Kronos is not ready to go, per the stuff that they have given you. I'm in testing and I'm communicating with the finance office about that. I've asked some questions that I'm waiting for answers. Okay, please, I'm, I'm happy for you to respond. Has she to that. responded to questions in any of our questions? Yes. Lately. Delayed, but yes. Yes, but we're not, not at any kind of point that we can move forward. Well, well I'm yes, still I'm waiting on answers. Waiting on answers. Okay. So, can I, can I jump in here? So, you're you're okay with the Kronos? I've never expressed opposition okay. to it. And I think but, but the only reason we even had a demo of it is because I requested right. it. Okay. I mean, again, th this is. If I'm rolling out a massive project in my office, I have a communication plan with the people that it's going to affect. I have a lot of things that I do with the people that are going to be going on this plan. Um, that has not been done. Okay, let, 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 me, let me take that and leverage back into something, Mr. Bayer, you said, it, or maybe you said, Colin, that it has value beyond just a payroll system, right? Correct. Um, Mine does. So, 
Right. I mean, so you're really you're coming here asking for two thousand dollar. Well, that's what they, they said two thousand dollar person accepts you. But I'm just trying to figure out. Let, let me let me let me finish this thought. If you're if you're committed to go to Kronos, I think ultimately that's where we want to land, right? I mean, that's yeah. We're looking for a, a good, a good timeline and a run path to and get everybody whether into the, the additional system. expense or the allocation of that money that's purchased through this the the system that you looked at has the value that you think could create value for your department. I mean, I'm okay moving forward with this. I mean, I think I just want to make sure that we have a commitment from the department heads to move to Kronos. That, that's it. I mean, uh, because that, that's that's in line with the two, 2012 uh, Act. I, I think the issue here, though, is that, I think this goes back to Mr. Mary Isbell's point, is that the fact that it's here, it should be like, typically what we look at are things like a violation of a purchasing order rule or something like that. There's nothing wrong with what Ms. Strong did. It's within her budget, and she's constitutionally authorized to make the purchase. The question is, is possibly, is it duplicative? But I mean, I can, I can say this. I've had the privilege of watching Ms. Strong since 2014 as she's taken over uh, her office, the circuit court clerk, and she's automated everything over there to the fact that it, you know, she more than pays for her office uh, with the fees and everything that she collects. So she, I've never known her not to operate in good faith in anything. And I think that it's, I just think it's beyond the purview of this committee to call into question a purchase that she's made to meet the needs of her department while expressing no opposite. You know, I, I, you know, the question is, is on a best case scenario, we're on what, David, eight to 12 months before Kronos is implemented. You know, we'll be well out of this budget year before this, uh, you know, she, if she needs a system in the meantime to do that. I, I don't think like, I mean, I hear what you're saying, Mr. Kerr, but I just don't think it's, uh, I think we're way overstepping the role of this committee to call one purchase order out of one department into question when it's within the allocated budget lines that she has to, to spend. Well, and, and I mean, specifically, oh, this is out of my yeah. data funds that per the statute is my complete sole discretion to spend. Like, yeah. it can't even be used for anything else other than what, I, I mean, it, this came from a very large pot of money that can only be used for certain things. It's not even specifically out of anything else within my office. And it's, again, it, it's for a one-year thing to get me out of having to manually keep up with a spreadsheet yeah. but again it also does it's a communicate it, it does things that chronos well i don't even know what chronos can do because none of that's been communicated to me but i mean it, it's a communication tool it keeps up with training certificates it keeps up with lots of other things besides just timekeeping um well that's in, but, you tell me that's inside of your purview right correct to, to make that decision just like any department head would have that discretion I think it belongs on this agenda today because we are trying to implement the 2012 Private Act. And that means a consolidated payroll system. If we've got a commitment of Ms. Strong to, to move to Kronos, this thing needs to go. We need to move it forward and be done with it. I mean, I, I hear the reason why we, you know, it's $2,000 exception. And, and, and I think up until now, I, I really didn't understand all the facts. I mean, I've, I've read it. But I hadn't heard it. Um, so I, I, I think that if we've got a commitment to move to Kronos, that's what this committee should be focused on, quite honestly. So. Um, man, is there some modules we can buy for Kronos to take care of the circuit clerk's certificates? Because I don't want them to have to do duplicate systems. I want her to get what she needs. But I believe are Kronos there... already has a way to track that. We just don't have a department that currently does it, so I'm not familiar with that aspect yet. I was not aware, aware that that was something that she needed to know. You wouldn't anticipate having to make more purchases to, to do the training and those things no. keep track. This will be what you need to move forward to keep track. And I, I still think we're oh, wait, just oh, a second. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm asking sorry. her. For what I'm using, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, what I'm using, I was able to implement in two weeks and it satisfies all the needs that I have. So that's, and, I, that's, and I'm able to give. The finance department anything they need to do yeah. for payroll right. do that okay. and, and and i would like to say this because you said this a couple times i have not said today that i have a commitment to go on chronos i am not opposed to chronos but i don't know i'm i'm just now at the stage of learning whether or not chronos even meets the needs of my office because that has not been conveyed to us at all and what 
and whether or not there's a segregation of duties within Kronos and who has control over what with Kronos. I mean, there, there's a whole lot that as elected officials that we have questions about that has not been answered. Well, let's do that. Can I offer this up? Why don't we roll that into the, the updating discussion on, on the implementation of the act and, and as you get your more uh, exposure to Kronos. But I, I do think, you know, the county's made the decision to move forward with Kronos. Sure. And uh, I think every department should look at it and use it. I mean, I've used it in different organizations. I think it's a really good system. Um, but I think the understanding that we got a commitment to consolidate our payroll function just from a control perspective. That's that's really, and if there, you know, you have a, something you want to implement differently that inside of Kronos, then that, let's talk that through. But I, I think at the end of the day, I, I don't, as long as we have commitment to move to Kronos, I think I'm good. I mean, um, so I think mean, that's just my thought. Yeah, I just don't think we need an exception because she has a, an exception implies that she's violated some type of purchase order. You're, you're, I think you're over reading what I'm saying. I no, 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 I agree with you. Okay. I, I agree with you. I'm just saying like what we have on the, what we have a motion now for an exception. I'm not sure. I don't think anybody had a motion. Oh, okay. 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 I thought, I'm sorry. I thought I, we had a motion. You're, you're hung up on this is quite an exception. Your motion I'm hung up on we've got to move forward. Yeah. My motion is to remove from the agenda. Yeah. yeah. So we've got a second to remove from the agenda? Second. So what is the motion? <laughs> so remove the purchasing issue item from the agenda now that we've heard from Ms. Ms. Strong. I take no action. Yeah. There is no action to take, basically. Just get her feedback at this point. So you want to take a vote on taking no action? Is that, what I, is that what I I would like that in the minutes that we're taking no action on this. So motion to take no action? But also have the minutes reflect that we had the discussion with Strong yeah. about sure. it, looking into Kronos. I mean, I just think just for the record, we need can, to have that. So. Can I just, while we're still on, I just have a question. So with Kronos, my understanding was, and maybe Mr. Langford, you were here, I don't know at what point the subcommittee voted on Kronos. If that was before your time or before just before you. My understanding is, and maybe you've read those, is that Kronos came about because the policy subcommittee back in the day did research. Hired a consultant. Hired a they consultant. Hired Moran, they're like one of the largest consulting. Firms so that's how we got to that selecting Kronos. Is that, I mean, I'm, I'm just trying my, to understand. It was my understanding of, I mean, I was chair of financial management a long time ago, like 10 years ago. Uh, and we were two years in, I think, at that time, David. The, the, the problem in the early, I mean, I think I gave this history before, just from my perspective, is, is that, you know, we've never, but for the first two years, David did not have the resources to do the implementation. We had a lot of things we had to do on the, we were jeopardizing all the county's data because we didn't have the IT infrastructure until probably 2019, 2020 to support, maybe 21 to support this implementation. So it, it's a it's a long journey to get there. Um, I, I think it's it's fraught with, the, it's just like with any other data implementation where you're dealing with something that's the one thing you never want to do in, a, in any kind of organization is miss payroll or mess up payroll. It was moved from in-house to in the cloud and we started over and yeah. when IT came, uh, we actually started completely over because they moved it from in-house to in the cloud so we had to reprogram all the rules. So we've done this thing two to three times now. At least. Yeah. So we've been through the implementation and then IT was going to help us and they restarted and we restarted the whole thing. They got down the road and actually terminated the two employees that were helping to do the implementation and would give them back to us. So we basically started over and then we brought in the Sheriff's Department after that when Nick came in. I think the understandable concern of the elected officials is not in opposition to what the county wants to do. It's they're sitting there with employees who are counting on paychecks and pay and everything else. They just want to make sure it's right. So I think that's the, it's just like any other implementation plan. It's fraught with a lot of twists and turns. But I, I think anything that, I mean, I honestly think from the committee's perspective, anything that we can do as we look at this plan to make sure that you know, there's great communication between the department heads and the committee and Mr. Lawley's office will help us in the implementation. And before it leaves this room, just so we, we say it for the camera, nobody's going to miss a paycheck. Just, right. The word out of this meeting is nobody's going to miss a paycheck. Right. 
and we, ever and we hear the this. frustration. No, I'm just, just saying, saying that. I'm get this right. I'm just saying that. I just the want to be clear if anybody says anyone they heard is, something. Is that, right. No, I agree. But the, the I know like anytime we do anything in the school system, I'll just speak for the school system. Our number one thing is is that whatever we adapt, update, anything else, we got to make sure that we do it in such a way that it doesn't mess up the system's ability to meet payroll. The, the other issue is our number one priority has not been the ERP. It's been the budgets, the payroll, your AP, your in. So this is just another side job we've been doing the whole time. We brought in IT, restarted. It was very unsuccessful, so we've restarted it. Um, this last month they funded some help, but we're at the process of trying to hire that help, so we're not even at that point where we have an issue. Even dedicated. Once David's in, is there any more discussion on this? No. Okay. So take no action, motion seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thank you for coming, by the way. No. All right. Uh, D is incremental weather. We have the county's policy in there for incremental weather. Our understanding is always and just included full time employees, but it does not say that. The library has what they're calling um, regularly scheduled part-time employees and just for your information we have started paying them for incremental weather unless somebody has an issue and wants to change the policy but it was always our understanding in the past it did not but they wanted to so we went and reviewed the policy closely and I cannot see any prohibition in the policy for that would it be if it's their regularly scheduled day to work yes okay. their understanding yeah and it wasn't I a large cost it was about Without benefits, which is the Social Security and Medicare on these particular employees, it was about $4,900. But that was the whole question in the past. It's always been no, but under the new policy, it looks like that would be allowed, as we can tell. I think that's fair. So to John's point, if the roads are covered with ice, this building's closed, everybody gets their paychecks? They regularly schedule part-time. In the past, they did not, but just to make sure everybody's okay. So salaried and? Well, you've got your regular hourly, Full time. Your full time's always did. Full time's always did it. But in the past, part time did not. But regularly scheduled. Part time scheduled. and scheduled to work that day. But it does bring up a question if you have non regularly scheduled work as you go part time, what happens to those folks? But that has that heel hasn't been hasn't been addressed yet. But as it came up, maybe something needs to be looked at later. But there's no. Do you need a motion? Around. No, just for information. Nothing needs in case somebody hears about it and wants to know what's going on. Thank you. The second last agenda item, uh, Mr. Long, is the Chronos, which we've discussed. Department number one was implemented this last month, Judicial Commissioners. And this is what we're saying. The employee that you guys requested we hire to help me move, move along. Um, the implementation we have interviewed uh, for the offered pay, we did not find an acceptable candidate, so we're going to re-advertise that particular job to see if we can find an employee. Um, item two, we are right now working on um, the libraries. There are what, five libraries, and they all do it a little different under the policy, a little different interpretation, a lot of anal analyzing. Um, and then right now, I think number three, we've had a question from the circuit court clerk, and when we get the libraries going, we want to go in and answer her question and see if she's ready to move forward. But right now, my thought process, we send an email out to all the departments and ask them for when their dead zones are within the next year and see if we can start trying to pull these in. But if you start going down the list, there are several large things we're going to run into. Um, the first one, I think, if it goes through budget, we'll deal with the first thing as far as automation. The lack of holdbacks has caused several departments not to be automated, which is a whole group that's down there. The sheriff's department, um, your largest department is done except for what we've got called on-the-job injury. So on-the-job on the injury, you get paid for, for um, basically it's workers' comp. You get paid two-thirds of your regular salary. The sheriff makes up the difference of the one-third. Right now, we're trying to set up a process with the um, risk management where that can be handled. After that's handled, we think we're in the park to start testing full uploads for the Sheriff's Department. We've only got that one snag that's, that's an issue with it. The other large department we've got done is EMS. EMS took on what's called um, Telestaff, which is an advanced scheduling that actually feeds some of the chronos. 
that was nothing we ne we ne we ever anticipated or brought in employees for their employee which do you remember his name and Ed um, left Sam. Sam Sam was the employee that did set that up and has worked on it we've been working with them but we have no training or staff that actually does that particular product that is one we are going to need to get Kronos involved in to figure out what's going on with the telestaff before we can completely automate that one back into the system which is going to take some time and probably um, Kronos and Kronos's involvement um, going down through the ones that are done, if you list the one that says county mayor and several of them right here on page three or page 23 of your actual agenda, one, two, three, about four down, there's a, a whole group there that's completely done. We're just waiting for the whole back issue to be handled and we're going to start looking at the complete upload of things to the complete automation. Um, gotcha. And then right here we've tried to list what we're working on and um, where we're at and that's something we've talked about before we've got to figure out what we want to prioritize versus office operations <laughs> versus that because like right now we're all finance pretty much involved in the budget process really heavily between now and the budget Annette runs the payroll when she's doing the furnace but she's actually running your day-to-day -day payroll so when you call or have offices or have issues she's the one actually doing that so that's where we're having, we do not have dedicated staff for Kronos or Kronos implementations. And when you do hire the implementers, you have to work with them. And are, are, the, are these going to be people that will be kept on later after implementation? What we've done in the past is Kronos worked with us, but you have to have staff to work with them, and it is very time intensive. Well, right now we do have some consulting money. We have tried to retain consultants, but that's not been, would you say, the best venture? It doesn't save me any time. It doesn't save any time because we end up It's cost me more work on the end. So right now I think getting the next week we're going to try to start interviews or re-advertise to try to pull that employee in and leave more time than that over into the actual Kronos implementation. What we would like to do is finish the libraries next. Uh, if the circuit court clerk's ready to move forward, start giving her the information and move forward with her. And we'll be happy to go through and list these and start coming up with tentative time frames if the committee so wishes. One thought we've been talking about purchasing with Highway and Chronos. If we pull the additional employee in to do first, you may want to consider, if you're amenable to it, of postponing the purchasing for Highway and take that employee fully over into payroll temporarily to work on the implementation of Chronos to try to knock it out first. It seems to be the largest project we have left. Would that be, that would be workable for you? Oh yes, I mean we're still, me and David still talking and uh, it's something that uh, we have moved forward so yeah, we, we, we we've been moving forward on stuff, I mean they they fit out seven projects for me in the last few weeks. So you're actively involved in all those? We're bidding with, we're just not done anything with POs and we've been working with him to get our bidding processes down with his and we'll work smoothly went really smooth i think the vendors were or rfq is a little more in depth so i think that was probably the only comment the vendors were used to the request for the things requesting proposals other than that i think it went off really smooth <clears throat> if we do that when do you see that the actual real transfer happening with employees moving over real transfer well you're saying you're converting that to payroll what well, we're saying if we hire the employee the original thought to start with was to use three days for payroll and two days for purchasing to pick up the rest of the POs yeah. and bid processing for Toby instead move the employee five days over into uh, payroll until further notice that would allow basically first we're gonna have to train the employee to do payroll and other functions than that other employees are doing to allow her more time to go into the crime function so at the end of the day, I'd like to see the payroll manager probably spend 80, 90% of their time completely into the Kronos implementation. We do have a PO out for Kronos, so we can pull Kronos back in, and we do have some consulting money. One of them we do have, since we've started the project, ECC is a brand new department. They do have uh, 20, what do they have, 12-hour shifts, I believe. I don't know, but they're 24-hour service. They're 24-hour service, but I believe they have 12-hour rotating shifts. And they're going to be one that we may or may not want to look at telestaff. The director two back actually wanted to do telestaff and we're ready to move forward, but they were not. But I think the, the best thing right now is if this coming week we have a net just to send out an email to all the departments and ask for their dead times for the ones that are left and see if we can move forward. 
for instance, Toby's got purchasing. If they move back, then we can start approaching him on the on the um, crimes because he does have a home back. But they're going to bring up new things such as um, his clock. We have to figure out about his clock. So that's one issue. Another one to bring up is we did work with the um, health department one other time. We ran into issues with their network. Uh, their, their network's very sporadic, so we may have to figure out a way to get around it. Because we actually started testing with him three years ago. Oh, well, four. We well, actually spent five years. And we, he never did get a consistent clock in enough for us to actually test him. Is that He's, every health department, all three locations, or just yes, the main? Yes, that's, that's all of them. That excludes the DGA employees. So there's several employees there. <clears throat> And they all work different and they actually are using the state policy. So they're using a completely different policy, they're using the state policy. We did do the testing, the rules are set up, and we have reached out to Hal. Did he get back with us or are we still waiting for him to respond? We're waiting on IT to give us the guess of what is in here. Okay. About so we're right the now the, the stop on it is we're waiting for IT to find out about any infrastructure changes to get that working. And right now is the best time to approach the court systems because they're moving into the new courthouse about the practice. So if I remember, the, the original uh, goal here was is to consolidate purchasing your, your function, right? Mm -hmm. You're saying postpone that until you get Kronos implemented mm -hmm. and then bring that percent of a person over to purchasing to well, consolidate purchasing in your group. To bring, to bring the person completing the payroll once the Kronos is implemented, then... So you're going to divert out of purchasing? Then we'll divert it back into purchasing after the Kronos is implemented. But if, uh, the, end, the end game is to have that employee sitting in your shop doing purchasing. Um, doing uh, probably half purchasing and half payroll. But they're, they're managed out of your shop. Right. Which okay. is the person that's, that you That's where I'm trying to make right. it. We ultimately get where you, we were trying to start. Right. And I just, I just mentioned that because when we told the committee, we said they were going to be half and half. And I don't want to make a large change without the same reason I brought up the other stuff. Gotcha. Okay, that makes Is sense. this person going to be totally dedicated to Toby or? No, they're they're in, they're the they're one we're hiring out. So basically, okay. what we're going to do right now, we want to totally dedicate them back into payroll to do Kronos. Once Kronos is doing done, then we have one that's already doing the county general. The rest of them, we'll take that person probably two two and a half days a week just to work on Toby's okay. purchasing and um, uh, POs. So we have a situation where the IT capability has been improved. Oh, at the county, but we, we still have some issues as far as like the health. Separate offices or the health department? They're looking at their issues over there. They have a network. So issue that's, that's just one. That's one we know about. As we go down through there. The other is training. That's, those are the two things that I've heard that has stopped the implementation of this because. I'm saying it's based on 12 years is a long time. We've got to think of all the changes it's made over the time. We started it, we spent a year with consultants. And then we spent until 2016, then the, 2016 then the financial sections. 2017, we started on the Kronos. At that time, it was the schools in the county. We both went down through there for about three years and determined it was probably not the best for schools. What, you know, with the IT and everything going on, probably wasn't the best fit. The school split back out in 19. So since 19, we had corona, uh, we had coronavirus in 19 and 20, and then then after that, we started pulling back in the sheriff's department. I guess after the coronavirus had settled, since 2000, when did we do the sheriff's department? Uh, 2020, the end of 2020. 2020, and then we did EMS, and then we pulled in these other departments during that time. So we're ready to move forward. The question is, we need to allocate resources. To and the number one priority right now is what's going on in the office is the budget process. And yours today, we tried to get you on it, but you had a lot of, you had payroll yeah, issues. Right. Yeah. The actual payroll department of paying payroll. Okay, so. Mr. Chairman, was this just I think informational? Just an, an update, too? right, Tim? Nothing yeah. about it? Well, I think right now we need to determine how the committee wants to move forward. Do you want us to contact all the departments and find out every department that we believe should be on there, their blackout dates, and report back to this committee the ones that do not respond next month? Because right now, we but we may send something in September and not receive a response for three months. So that's where we're at right now, is slow, okay. very slow responses. I think that a lot of that comes back to what this resolution that, that 
was added to this. So we do get some timelines because right now we've never had any timelines. And that's what we need to do is get some hard timelines as to what we're going to do as far as implementation. Otherwise, we're just going to keep on kicking the can down the road. When do you, based on what we're getting ready to re-advertise, where are we at on re-advertising to them for the week? Well, that's not what I'm at. I'm not asking well, we you to come up with that right now. What I'm, I'm saying is on this resolution right here is... Do you want to move past his and then we can get to yeah, um, I mean, if, adding if, some if, feedback to this? Yeah, because like I say, a lot of this, the, the resolution uh, would be tying in that uh, as far as when uh, come up with a timeline as to what date you, you would have all this mm -hmm. this done and then a timeline as to when full implementation will be done. Those are the two things we're looking at. So that's what what I would like to see as far as the resolution is concerned. And, and we can, like I say, give you a month on that to figure out the implement, uh, who, who's missing who needs to be brought up today? I, I think we'll need to contact the consultants because we have some, and also contact probably Chronos for some of them too. We're going to start lining up Chronos. We started that open PO. For ECC, um, I need to know when they're available because some of the problem is if you tell me, okay, they have to be by. May of 2025. Okay, well, I reach out to them and then I get pushed back and then I get pushed back and then I get pushed back and then I get, well, they want to do it this way. Well, that's not for policy. Well, you can't tell me what my policy is. And so it extends everything out. What Commissioner Brown's asking, correct me if I'm wrong here, is that we probably need to understand the benchmark here. If we got departments pushing back, we need to articulate that on our report. So we can move forward with asking Mr. Mayor, whoever, to help us move that forward. I think right now, every time I see this report, it's like a moving target. Right. And I think we've got a set in stone. We're going to give it 30 days, 60 days. You come back and you tell us where the where the hurdles are. Okay. And then from there, we can say, here's let's let's work this department, this department, this department. But right now, we see. I mean, this is great information, but it, it is. It's like a moving target every time you see it. Uh, I would be in favor of, of moving forward. I, I'm open on the date, whatever the date looks like, but a date to say, you tell us where we are on each of these departments and what we need to do as a committee to help. Okay. Uh, that's that's what well, well, I would like. When we start our problem. communications, we're going to the date is you want us to round it back to the committee to let them get back and bother the email. That's right. That's what we're running into right now. We're non responsive. <laughs> Todd, was there a motion in there somewhere? Yes, I would say let's, the motion is come back and let's, let's talk about the date, whatever the date is. I think, uh, what, 60 days from now, to come back to the committee and say, we've rounded with every department, we've got no traction here, and here we have traction. And understand those hurdles of those departments that are not responding, are not uh, working with your team to, to move forward to full implementation. So, I would all, I would say 60 days. Uh, you come back with a, a report that gives department by department uh, summary because we can't help you until we know what the hurdles are. Right? Yeah, so. I'd like to know the hurdles when when they when they can do it the fastest. Like what what is the earliest date they could implement, right. and then what are the hurdles to, to overcome to hit that date? And then I would add one more layer to that, not just the hurdles, but you tell me what you think how they should be put in priority. What are the highest and lowest risk? So it's kind of a mini risk document. So we can say, of those 10 that are not responding, this is the, the top two ones. Here, now let's do all hands on deck and get, get these done. So. I'd like to add to that too. I wonder, Mayor Isabel, if we could get the elected officials association to tell us their side, because I feel like, you know, I know when you do these big implementations, there's multiple sides to every implementation. I think we need to hear what their snag and choke points are too, because part of the committee's work's got to be is to work through those points too. So I'd like to hear from the elected officials as well that, yeah. you know, because maybe if we got everything at the table, we can sit here and we can figure out some of these things and move forward. I would roll that into the city. Today. I, yeah. I agree because it was very helpful when Ms. Strong mm -hmm. explained that she wanted to record her certificates. And then Annette yeah. added that we do have that, and we just didn't know. We may not they be as far apart as we imagine. We just need to get everybody together and talk. I think I that's think. important. And it, if we had learned that before, maybe we could have. 
It's been quite so I think this has been a good conversation. Who owns that? Is that the mayor? Does he own that piece of that? I'm sorry. I'm trying to get with the y'all. Sure, I, I'll be happy to talk to county officials. Okay. Now, uh, <clears throat> forgive me, I, I stepped out for just a minute. Are we on item E? Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. We're going and, through the okay. the update. And, I think and the motion right now is, is to uh, give our finance director 60 days to go with the department, uh, department summary yeah, of yeah. those so, and maybe offering forward. pushback yeah. or asking questions. Okay. Let me ask I think asking you. questions is not pushback. Can it I seems as though we've painted a picture mm -hmm. that everybody's against this program. And, uh, and I don't think we're against the program. And my office is on Chrono, so you know, I'm not coming at it from being opposed to Chronos. But I think I think the picture is being painted that county officials are against this and I think that's an inaccurate picture um, well, because this has been hold on. Because we've been working on this for ten years now. And then twelve years. And uh, and now all of a sudden it's an emergency. And and I agree that, you know, let's work towards something. But let's be careful painting the county officials as bad actors in this, and that David's going to come back and give us a report on the bad actors, uh, because that's not what that is. When you ask questions, that's not being a bad actor. That's asking questions. So that's all I've got. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, would it be possible to bring those folks in through the <clears throat> mayor's office, and, and then we just suspend the rules in the next meeting, next month? And we, we ask I, those questions. I learned more from Mrs. Strong than I did. You know, yeah, I mean, I, I think that the would struggles be very that helpful. I mean, you can see it on I mean, paper, but to I, hear I people. Like, we okay. actually haven't approached all the departments. We've only approached the ones that we've tried to do. That's why I'm saying we share several we've done and several we've approached. Some of them said they want to wait till later or have a response. Some of them we haven't approached at all because we've been dealing with those. But I'm mm -hmm. saying this has been a moving target for years with major changes in what's included, what's not included. Um, who's in, you know moved it to IT and back? I mean, it's been all maybe we go back versus pushback. That, that may not be a good word. Maybe it's a complete understanding of what the expectations are. Why don't we? Can we just send out right from my office a nice email to ask everybody when their availability would, would be to move forward with the chrono system? And when they yeah, that's fair. Kind of get that. Do a timeline based on that and just move forward. I, I still to go back to Mayor. I've got two things. I think to go back to Mayor is, but I think we need to hear from them whether it's coming to the meeting, like Mr. Brown suggests, or something. I'm, I agree with you, Dave. You need to know a timeline, but I think we it helped us here to hear what the choke points and problems are. The other thing is for Mr. Long, um, I don't think 60 days with budget coming up, um, it's going to be hard for him to get anything turned around in 60 days because budget's going to eat up. All the time. In all fairness to, to our I, finance director. I think, I think to our finance director, probably 90 or 120. I know we want to get this done, but I think um, there aren't enough hours in the day for him to get all the things done with budget and get this done. We have we have consultants that we're paying right now to be working right now. No, the problem we get into is the consultants we have to work with them in the department. So it ends up being because in IT at one point, the consultants actually take as much time as not having them. So the only time they're useful is if it's something we don't know, or if we take chronos and it's something we don't know and want training on. That's kind of the best way to put it. So it's only on an as needed basis you're using consultants? We've not used any for, basically we just now implemented a full department internally. We didn't use any. We brought in. So we don't have any idle bodies. Just and we're trying to bring libraries on board within the next month or less. A few days, maybe. I mean, they're ready. We're ready to pull the libraries in all five of them, and we did that internally. So we're not using any external help. We're actually using things in our departments, but we're prioritizing the payroll stuff over. No, That's what we're doing. I, I believe Todd's motion we're just discussing. Is it 60, 60 days, or are you going to move it to 90 days? Right are you going to stay with 60 days? So do you think 90 or 120 would be a better fit? I think right now what we need to do is try to get you just to report back that we what we what we have done. If we've reached out, got the libraries done, and asked them when they're available, and maybe set up a meeting for next financial management for the officials to sit in here and see what they what they mm -hmm. want of us. Yeah, if they could come next time, that will help us. I mean, if Miss Strong had said she needed a system to keep up with her certificates before. We would have been ahead of that without taking time. Yeah. So, yeah, if they want to come and 
I think next time if they come and just talk. Mr. Mayor, would you invite them to come next That's month? Yeah. So we're looking at the next meeting, 60 days. Next meeting, have all the officials. Yeah. Is the next meeting yeah. 60 days or is it 30? Third. Third. Let's do the well, next, next meeting. meeting's in 30 days, yeah. Third yeah, let's, and then we can follow up after that. But that's what I was trying to make sure the committee understands. We are prior to, prioritizing day to day operations, which is this year. We was the first year we did W2s in the new chrono system, so it took, including me and you <coughs> and several of us, what about 50 to 100 extra hours? So we actually, nobody was working on chronos because we were actually working on W2s and payroll. So let me withdraw that 60 days and we'll come back 30 days to start hearing from the department personnel. Now 30 days? So the next meeting, we'll invite everybody to sp suspend the rules and just have a discussion, basically. Right, and that's what we've been doing the last year. We were actually doing the payroll system. And we dropped out of Chronos and actually brought in the new system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that's the motion. The motion? All right. Any second? And again, this is to suspend the rules for the next meeting and invite all the department heads to discuss challenges of implementing Chronos so we can hear back. And I would, I would, I mean, I don't know how many you can crank through in one meeting, but um, we might want to, it might be two meetings if we got to do that. I don't, I don't know how many people and what the concerns are, so I, I think it would be fair to say start working through that in the next meeting. It's really almost like a like what budget yeah. does for the there's, work session. There's some passion here. We need to get, you know, <laughs> we need to hear it. Well, we want to hear what the hurdles are. If, if we get it. So. Okay, so we've got a motion and a second. All in favor? Uh, all right. Uh, all right. Uh, all right. Motion carries. Uh, I make a motion to defer the resolution until we get this report back from uh, the finance director and the officials. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, all right. Motion to adjourn. I so I, I need to be clear. When do you want to I'll see I'll second the adjournment. The resolution? Yes. In two months. In two months. Okay. So we're, we're postponing the resolution for two meetings until we hear back. Motion and a second. All approved. I don't know. Motion's adjourned.